Hello, welcome to Midnight Oil Software. I'm Greg, and in this video, I want to talk about a 2D game that I did that's basically an Angry Birds clone, but it's kind of unique in that I'm only using hand-drawn art, uh, art that I actually learned to draw by um, attending some Zoom fine arts classes from an artist named Mark Kistler. So I'll switch over to my game here. So you can see, I called the game Ninja Eggs, and I called it Ninja Eggs because Ninja Egg is one of the characters that Mark Kistler taught us how to draw in his classes. Uh, and as you can see here, if I play the game, it's basically an Angry Birds clone. Uh, a little plug here for Mark Kistler and his Fine Arts Academy. Um, but if I play the game, um, I have uh, this Ninja Egg character, which you can see is, is basically a hand-drawn pencil drawing with some animation. Uh, the background is all hand drawn. Uh, you see the, uh, instead of pigs, we've got these cute little koala bears on this level and all the planks and, and things, the bricks, the ground, all of that was hand drawn. Um, you notice the ninja egg's eyes are animated uh, and his mouth is closed. But if I click on him to drag him, uh, you can see that his mouth is now half open and his eyes are no longer animated. Uh, I've got some particle effects coming out of him. And when I launch him, watch his mouth will go to full open. And his eyes are, are no longer animating. And his wings go away when he collides. Um, another thing I want you to watch is when I launch him, watch the location he launches from. And you'll see a little like puff of smoke that I animate there and it, it fades out. So, and I think that's kind of funny the way he goes off the edge of the world there. Um, so again, I, I mentioned that the art that I'm using in this game was inspired uh, by some classes that we attended from uh, Mark Kistler. Um, you may remember Mark Kistler from his shows on PBS. He had a show called The Secret City and a show called The Imagination Station. Here you can see Imagination Station is, uh, is available on Amazon. And so um, we really enjoy watching his shows. Um, he has a lot of content on YouTube if you want to try out some free stuff. And uh, his Zoom um, art classes are, are really fun if you're looking for a family activity or something that you can do. Now, the game itself was really inspired by uh, a tutorial by this guy, Jason Wyman. Uh, Jason probably has some of the best YouTube content um, for Even Unity that I've seen. Before, uh, he, he's very knowledgeable, he's a very good teacher. Process, and in this video, which is almost three sure hours long, um, he takes sure you through the entire process of creating an Angry Birds clone game from scratch. So I really use this as the foundation for my game, and uh, you can, I'm sure, see the similarities, uh, like the ground tiles here, the background, the, the stuff that I drew, that I hand drew, I based pretty heavily on, on the art from the asset packs that he was using. Uh, but I did take it considerably farther than he took it in his tutorial, uh, but I, I do suggest checking out his content. So how do I make this hand-drawn content and how do I get it into Unity so that I can use it in a game like this? Well, what I did was I, obviously I had to draw the art first. So I basically just did a pencil drawing. I'm just using a mechanical pencil there and some colored pencils. I use an ink pen to darken in the edges uh, to make the lines really pop out and then colored pen, uh, pencils to add color. You'll notice I'm drawing the mouth and the eyes separately from the, uh, the main image here because I want to be able to animate them uh, and have different versions of the egg with you know his mouth open, his mouth half open, his mouth closed. I want to be able to animate his eyes to different positions. So I drew them all separately. Uh, and you can see here I'm just adding some shading. Uh, and there it is. That's pretty much it. That's the whole image. I probably did it in five minutes. Um, and... I'm pretty sure anybody with very limited drawing skills could do something comparable to that. I don't really consider myself an artist um, or really being able to draw that well, but something like this is pretty simple and anybody should be able to do that. But how do I take this hand-drawn image and, and turn it into something that I can use in Unity uh, for my game? Well, I'm gonna use uh, an editing program called GIMP. GIMP is free. Um, you can download it for Windows, you can download it for the Mac, I'm pretty sure you can download it for Linux, 
So I'm going to use this tool because it's something that pretty much anybody should be able to get their hands on and use. Um, you could use Photoshop or whatever your, your photo or image editing tool of choice is. I'm going to use GIMP. Um, and so basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a scan. Um, if you don't have a scanner, um, you could probably uh, use your iPhone to take a picture of your image and bring it in. Uh, in this case, I scanned it. And on this particular scan, I have this, this alien, I have a space hamster, and I have these uh, parachuting penguins. I use these. Um, Mark Kistler in his classes likes to have little paper puppets that he'll pull out at random points during the class. I'll go, parachuting penguins! And I'll have the puppets come down across the screen. So I thought it would be cool in my game to have some cutscenes where I show like one of his paper puppets that I drew uh, with an audio clip that I grabbed from one of his classes. Uh, I'm going to show in another video how to animate those puppets. But for this video, I'm just going to show how I can take this alien image and create um, a transparent sprite that we could bring into Unity uh, and how we can um, have it interact with the physics in the Unity game engine and interact with other objects um, in the scene. And you can see I've drawn a couple of eyes uh, separately and then um, this little cross here is just like for a dead version of the alien that I can replace his eyes with with just these little crosses. Uh, so how would I take this this image and make it transparent so that I can pull it into Unity. I'm going to use this lasso or freehand select tool. And by the way, if you're a particular tool that you want to use isn't showing up in this palette here, you can just go up here under Tools, and in this case, Selection Tools, and you'll see the free select tool. Uh, because this palette will change um, based on the tools that you use the most frequently. But I'm just going to click that free select tool, and I'm going to click around my image and basically block out the shape that I want to copy. So um, I'm just doing a rough selection. I don't have to be real precise here. And once I have it selected, I can copy that to the clipboard. You can either come up here to edit, copy, or you could just press control C. I'm going to click copy and then under file, you'll see create from clipboard. Uh, and you could press shift Control v to do that. And you'll see it created a new tab with just that selection there. And you'll notice he's not oriented. He's on his side. I want to stand him straight up. So there's a rotate tool. And once again, you could go up here to tools, uh, in this case, transform tools, rotate, if you don't see it up here. But I'm going to click that. And when you have the rotate tool selected, you can grab your image anywhere and just start moving your mouse and I grabbed it by clicking uh, the left mouse button. And then once you have it in the orientation you want, hit enter and it will rotate the image. Now, we have all this non-transparent image here around our alien that we want to get rid of. So the easiest way to get 99% of that done is there's a tool called Fuzzy Select Tool. It's this little magic wand looking thing. And again, if you don't see it in the palette, you can go to Tools, Selection, fuzzy select or you could click the U key. I'm just going to click that on the palette and I'm going to click in this white area here. Uh, why? I don't have the right one selected. Okay, click in the white area and you can see it's selected a whole bunch of this white area. And I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click inside his eyeball here and inside his eyeball here. So these are all areas I want to have be transparent. Actually, I don't think I want the eyeballs to be transparent. So I'm going to take the Rec Select tool and click outside of there and then go back to that Fuzzy Select and just click that. So now that I have that selected, if I hit Delete, boom, it's, it's got us most of the way there. Almost all of that ugly, non-transparent paper stuff that we saw around our image is gone. Now if we zoom in, you'll, you'll see there's quite a bit of rough stuff around the edges here. And I've found the easiest way to clean that up is to use the eraser. So there's an eraser tool up here on your palette. And again, if you don't see it, you can go to Tools, Paint Tools, Eraser, or click Shift-E, press Shift-E. So I'm going to click on that eraser. And you can see I've got this big circle where if I hold down the left mouse button, I can erase areas of the image. And you can change the size of that circle over here 
you can make it smaller so you can have more fine tuned. And one thing I like to do is I like to hold down the left button and erase a little and then let go. And then hold down the button, erase a little and let go. And the reason I do that is because let's say I'm, I'm going here and I'm cleaning, 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 and I go, oops, and I mess up. If I hit control Z to undo, it, done, it undoes everything I did since the last time I, I let go. So I like to do it in short little batches so that if I mess up, I only undo the last one I did. Now, I, I can sit here and I could clean this all up and make you watch me do it, but you get the idea. And I don't have to be real precise for this video, but for the real image for the game, I want to get this as clean as possible. And it can be a little bit tedious, but uh, take your time and, and make sure you clean up all these things. And uh, let's pretend that I've, I've done that, that I've got it all cleaned up. And now I want to crop this down to just the portion of the image I want. So there's a crop tool. And again, if you don't see it, you can go to tools, um, transform tools, crop, or you could hit shift C. I'm just going to click the crop tool and I'm going to roughly grab around the image more than I need. And then if you, if you put your mouse over the edge, you see this little selection rectangle come up and you can adjust that and get as close as you want to the edge on that side. And you can do that for all four sides the top, the left, the bottom, the right. Um, grab that, drag it down. Grab that and drag it over. And then when you're done, hit enter and just crop the image down to that side. And at this point, I'd probably want to work on my eyes and I would do the same thing. I'd, I'd uh, use the selection tool. I'd select that. Uh, I'd hit control C to copy it to the clipboard and I'd say create from clipboard and now I have a new image and I'd go through the same process where I'd use that little selection thing and I'd, I'd do the same thing for cleaning up the eyeball and then I could just copy and paste it over top of my image. Um, well, let's do that. Now it's too big right now so I'm going to actually go to image, scale image and I'm going to go to percentage here instead of pixels and I'm going to make it I'm going to say 40 percent of its current size and I'm going to scale it. Now if I hit um, control A, control C and I go back to my image and hit control V I've got this eyeball here and I can drag him up to where I want it uh, on the on the image. I'll do it again and you know you can take as much time as you want to try to get that looking the way you want it. And when you're done, you're going to want to export this image to a transparent PNG file. Now before I do that, I want to point out that this image is huge. Uh, this, this image is from the raw scan that I did for my scanner and I think I scanned it at 600 DPI and it's, it's like, let's see if we go to scale, uh, let's look at the canvas size. I mean it's 1800 by 1788, that's way bigger than 600 pixels per inch. You don't want to make a sprite in Unity from an image that big. You could do it and it would work, but if you have, you start adding a lot of these and your performance is really going to suffer. So let's um, go into image, scale image, and make this guy about 10%. Yeah, only 10% of what I need. And this is much more along the lines of the size of the sprite I want in my game. And when I'm happy with them, I can save them. Um, and then when, you, when you're ready to export and you go to File, Export As, and then you want to select PNG, you want to navigate to a folder to export them to, um, and I'm just going to put them into my Documents folder here, and I'm just going to call it Alien. Click Export, and it's going to pop up this little dialog here, and you can just go ahead and take these defaults and click Export and boom, it's exported it to documents. Now, I'm gonna switch over to Unity now. And I'm gonna open up Unity Hub. And I'm gonna create a new 2D project. Because the uh, Angry Birds game is, is, is a 2D uh, side view game. And I'm gonna call this 2D Sprite Demo 2. Uh, say create. I'll take a drink here. Okay. 
Okay, so we have a new 2D project. There's nothing in it. Uh, I'm going to, under assets, if you never used Unity before, this is your hierarchy of things that are in your scene, and you can have multiple scenes. So uh, in my game, every level is its own scene. The, uh, the start screen that you see when you first open the game has its own scene. Uh, the ending screen, the game over screen, um, uh, has its own scene. So uh, scenes are just a way to organize things uh, in your game that, that change when you go like from level to level or whatever. Now in this scene, which is called sample scene, I have an assets folder, and this is where all the assets uh, for our game live. So under assets, we currently have a scenes folder, and you see sample scene. I'm gonna create a folder under assets, and I'm gonna call it art. And so I'm gonna right click in here, create, folder, and I'm just going to call it art. And off screen, I'm going to open up an imported art files. Actually, it's not the one I want. Or yes, it is actually. So I, I have a, a version of that alien that I've already cleaned up. And I'm going to drag him into this art folder. So if you look, there's our little alien. Uh, there's another one I want to copy over. Uh, let me navigate up here uh, I should have had this folder open before I started I'm sorry about that okay and I'm going to copy in I just want to copy in an image that we can use uh, for the ground because we want to have something for our sprite to interact with we want them to be able to, to fall down out of the sky and land on the ground right so we don't want him to just float in midair and not be able to do anything. So how do we make this image a sprite? Well, it's actually very simple. You grab him and you drag him into your scene. And you'll notice over here, he's got a sprite renderer. And if I hit play, we look at our game. Hey, there he is. He's right there in the middle of our scene. He's not doing anything. It's kind of boring. It's not much fun, but there it is. It's, he's in our game. He's a sprite. He's transparent. Um, and let's drag in this, uh, well actually before I do that, there's some things you need to do to make him inter interact with the physics engine. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is add a rigid body 2D. Um, and this is gonna, it has to be important that you selected 2D, this is a 2D game. If you selected uh, just plain rigid body, um, if you selected this one, uh, it would not interact with the 2D physics engine. So it has to be rigid body 2D. Now, um, you'll notice there's a couple important things. There's a checkbox here called simulate it. This means that the physics engine will interact with this. And we're telling them to have a gravity scale of one. And if I hit play now, watch what happens. Ah, he falls down because he's being affected by gravity. If I unchecked simulate it and I clicked play, nothing happens because the physics engine is not being applied to them. Uh, so let's drag in this grassy ground image. Oh, and by the way, this, this is great. We have this sprite here. Um, but if we want to be able to spawn multiple uh, sprites in our game, we're going to want to create a prefab from him. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to add another component. I'm going to add a box collider. 2D. Again, it's important to select the 2D version. Uh, and you'll notice, um, if we look at them, I can actually click this little edit here. You can see this green box around him. That is what he will collide with. I'm going to move him off of the ground here. And we go back to that box collider and, and click edit this is a collider, so anything that anything else that has a collider that makes contact with this point will trigger a collision for this, this um, alien. Now, a box collider is not the best thing to use. Um, I'll show you another collider we could use. We could add a polygon collider, 2D. And if we click Edit Now, you see it's created a collider that is roughly the shape of the alien. And, and again, I could, I could grab these points and I could drag them if I wanted to like fine tune this guy. I could, I could probably even add more points and stuff. Uh, but anyway, this shows you how you can make 
a collider that more accurately represents the shape of your sprite. Now, if I was to drop this guy in the ground now, he would tip over because this end is lower than this, and, and he would tip over until all these points were in contact. He might even fall all the way over. Um, so this would be where you'd probably want to make sure that these are all lined up and so forth. So now we have our collider and we have a rigid body 2D. So let's create a prefab for this alien. I'm going to go in here to my assets folder. I'm going to right click, click create a folder. And I'm going to call that folder prefab. And I'm just going to drag that guy into my prefab folder. And there he is. He is now a prefab for an alien sprite. If I delete that from our scene and I drag him in, there he is. He's got a sprite render. He's got a rigid body. He's got a polygon collider. He's good to go. Now, let's take a look at this ground image. Currently, this ground image is a sprite. Um, but if we hit play, our alien is going to fall right through it. Uh, wait a minute. Do we not have simulation turned on for our alien? Rigid body 2D. It simulated was turned off. I got to remember to turn that on. Now I'm going to apply that to our prefab um, so that every alien we drag in will have that on there. If I hit play, there he goes. He fell and he fell right through the ground. So what do you think we need to do to make the ground keep him from falling through? Well, all we need to do is pick that ground and add component and add a box collider, 2D. Now if we hit play, our alien falls and he stops at the ground. And this collider, we'd probably want to adjust this collider because if we zoom in here, um, it looked like the alien stopped above the ground somewhat. So either the alien's collider needs to be adjusted or the box collider's needs to be adjusted. And it's probably the alien, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Uh, if, I, if, this, if we weren't under the constraints of time and me trying to keep this video from getting too long, I would go ahead and fix that. Uh, the important thing now is I want to show how we can make this ground tileable. So this is a sprite, but if I grab it and I try and stretch it, Ew, that is not the effect that we want. So what we want is we want to be able to tile this ground across our scene and have it look like it's look natural. So I'm going to look at our sprite, and you see draw mode is simple. Let's change it to tiled. Ooh, we got an error here, or a warning. Sprite tiling might not appear correctly because the sprite used is not generated with full rect or sprite mode set to polygon mode. So how do we fix that? Well, we fix that by going back to our art, our image. And if we click on that and look at it in the inspector, you'll see the mesh type is tight. Well, let's make that full rect. And if I click away and I go back to here, you'll see it's going to ask me to apply that. And now our warning went away. So we have our draw mode tiled. Our warning is gone. So if I grab this and I start to size it, you can see we're getting a nice tiled effect. So we're going to go ahead and size our ground out far away to either side. And so if I hit play, our alien falls. He did just like I was afraid he was going to do. He tips over. Okay, now we can fix that temporarily um, by going into the, the um, rigid body for our alien. And down here under constraints, uh, let's see, under constraints, I can say freeze rotation. So we let him go now. He's not going to rotate. The right way to fix that would be to play around with his collider and make sure that he's got a good center of balance and that his collider evenly distributes his weight across the surface he's standing on and keeps him from tipping over. Now, obviously, in the game, we're going to want to do that because we're going to want to be able to knock him over when he gets hit by our ninja egg or his uh, um, eyes were moving up and down. And then also, I'll show you how I changed the image when I dragged him from being the, the uh, idle image where he's just sitting there with his wings flapping and his eyes will move to his mouth being half open. And then when I let him go, his mouth went 
full wide open and gave you the expression. He's like, ah. So uh, for now, I'm going to wrap this up, and I hope you found this useful. If you did, I would uh, please ask you to click the like button and subscribe to my channel and share it with any of your friends on your social media networks and so forth. And also, um, if you have any questions or if there's a particular topic you'd like to see me uh, cover in the future, please leave a comment down below. And um, I'll try to leave links in the description for things I talked about. I'll have a link to Jason Wyman's tutorial. I'll have a link to uh, Mark Kistler's uh, website and his Zoom um, Fine Arts Academy. And um, also I have a link to where you can download GIMP. And uh, if there's anything else, uh, thing else I can think of that would be useful for this tutorial, I'll have a link to that as well. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.